Thank you and uh, good afternoon, everybody. One of my main research interests is paleoclimate, and so I thought I'd start with uh, an insight from paleoclimate research. Actually, this diagram is the fruit of decades of paleoscience using sediment cores, ice cores from many places around the world, which by now enables us to reconstruct the evolution of global average temperature since the last ice age 20,000 years ago. And you see here the warming from the ice age into the Holocene by about four degrees, then a very slow gradual cooling trend. And as many of you will know, these ice ages are caused by cycles of the Earth orbit and Primarily what we see here is a precession cycle which has a period of 23,000 years and is the, the shortest of these cycles. And we are pretty certain that this long-term cooling trend from the mid-Holocene would have continued if human activities had not sharply bent around this curve. And with 100 years, we have undone more than 5,000 years of cooling. And current temperatures are very likely higher than any time in the Holocene and uh, therefore higher than any time in the history of human civilization. Also, if we look at the speed of warming, if we take the fastest one degree warming at the, from going from the Ice Age to the Holocene, we see that took about more than 1,000 years. And so the modern warming is actually more than 10 times faster than that fastest change in global temperature that we have seen here at least in the last 20,000 years. And we should also not forget that this warming by four degrees meant that two thirds of the continental ice masses from the last ice age melted, raising global sea level by about 120 meters. And we still have enough ice on Earth to raise the global sea level by about 65 meters. If we look at the pattern of that modern warming, you will see that it has warmed practically everywhere on the globe with one very notable exception that is the subpolar North Atlantic, just uh, south of Greenland and Iceland. And I will get back to this peculiar thing uh, later on in my talk. But let me first explain, since uh, this is a session on tipping points, what is a tipping point? And to make it short as a kind of elevator pitch version, it's a critical point where a major system transition is triggered. And uh, that could be, for example, an ecosystem collapse. And I will give two examples uh, in my talk. And an everyday example uh, familiar for the Arctic is if you think of a kayak, if you lean over to one side, the kayak will resist that motion, but only up to a point. When you lean too far at a critical angle, it will just flip over. And uh, that is because there is a nonlinear dynamics going on here. And the same type of uh, or similar types of nonlinear dynamics are behind the reasons why there are tipping points in the climate system. And those subsystems that exhibit this nonlinear behavior, they are known as the tipping elements of the climate system. And if you see, here is a, an overview map, and you see the Arctic uh, has some of these tipping elements. The ones in yellow are those that uh, could be triggered at a global warming range somewhere between one and three degrees. So between now and um, yeah, sometime depending on our emissions in the next decades. I will begin by talking about the Greenland ice sheet. And we have satellite measurements that demonstrate that the ice sheet is losing mass. It's the gray satellites, they are basically weighing the mass of the ice sheet because of the gravitational pull that the ice sheet uh, produces that affects the, the orbit of these satellites. And yeah, you can see how progressively the ice sheet is losing mass all around uh, the perimeter. Uh, up at the summit, it is too cold to actually melt, at least uh, most of the time. There are a few exceptional melt events for some days, even up on the summit of Greenland. So the ice sheet is melting. And we know it has a tipping point because of the ice elevation feedback. That is this nonlinear mechanism uh, that we need for a tipping point. And it's very simple to explain it. The ice sheet is very thick. It's about 3,000 meter thick. And that's why the surface is way up in layers of the atmosphere that are very cold. 
But when it melts and the surface lowers, it automatically moves into warmer layers of the atmosphere. And from a certain point onwards, it, this becomes self-sustaining and will doom the ice sheet to a complete loss. And this tipping point is somewhere between one and three degrees. We can't uh, tell that more accurately, but it will commit the planet to seven meters of global sea level rise. And so I think this is a disaster that should be avoided at all costs, basically. We will commit many generations after us to continuing struggle with rising sea levels and having to give up coastal cities and so on. Here, we see an animation of a simulation of an ice sheet model, a film by NASA, which shows what this uh, will look like in the future, the gradual retreat of the Greenland ice sheet. Bedrock will become free. This, of course, doesn't happen as fast as flipping over a kayak. It will take about of the order of a thousand years for the ice sheet to get completely lost. But the melting, of course, has already started. What about the North Atlantic current? Oh, can I have the sound? The current depends upon a delicate balance of salt and fresh water. We all know that. Yes, but no one has taken into account how much fresh water has been dumped into the ocean because of melting polar ice. I think we've hit a critical desalinization point. So some of you might have seen this Hollywood movie from 15 years ago. Uh, a lot of what's in that movie is very unrealistic, but this is a scene that is very realistic. It talks about that critical desalination point. This is a real thing that is the tipping point of the Atlantic overturning circulation or North Atlantic current, or also known as Gulf Stream system. And it also talks about the melting of polar ice not having been accounted for. And that is still true even today. It was just a few weeks ago, we had the special report on oceans and cryosphere of the IPCC. And the models used there to assess the fate of the Atlantic overturning circulation still mostly do not include the Greenland ice sheet. Yet the melting of the ice sheet is connected with the Gulf Stream system because the meltwater weakens that ocean circulation. And that's because it is fresh water. And in that subpolar Atlantic, the water sinks down to great depths, 2,000, 3,000 meters, because the water is heavy, because it's salty. And if you add fresh water, that whole uh, circulation gets slowed down. And uh, this also has a tipping point because of another nonlinear dynamics feedback. The Gulf Stream system itself is bringing the salty water to the north. And if you slow that down, it also makes it even less salty. And uh, there is a critical point where then the circulation breaks down, which would lead to a major climate disruption. This cold uh, blob that you saw in that earlier global temperature map that would expand. Now it's only in the ocean, but it would expand over land areas, including Iceland, Scotland, Scandinavia. It would disrupt the marine ecosystem in a major way, the path of the jet stream. It, it is another of these tipping points I think we should try to avoid at all cost. We know the Gulf Stream system is already slowing. On the left-hand side here, you see a model simulation for a CO2 increase with the best climate model we have from colleagues in Princeton with the highest ocean resolution, most realistic Gulf Stream of any uh, global climate model. And it shows a very particular pattern of sea surface temperature change there, which we call a fingerprint of a Gulf Stream slowdown. It has this big cold patch south of Greenland, as you can see here, but also a peculiar warming along the American coast because the Gulf Stream itself is moving northward when you slow that whole system down. And my PhD student, Levke Cesar, has spent the last years analyzing all the available global sea surface temperature data sets going back to the 19th century and uh, plotted the observed trend in sea surface temperatures. And it also has this peculiar same fingerprint, uh, except more fuzzy because, of course, we don't have nearly as much observational data as the fine details that we have in a model. But I think you will agree that we see a very similar pattern in the northern Atlantic here. And that indicates a slowdown of the Gulf Stream system. And the paleoclimate proxy data, to finish with paleoclimate again, they also show the same thing, namely that the Gulf Stream system is slowing. 
This goes back uh, more than a thousand years. These are different uh, sediment cores with, from different research groups with different methods. The, the reference, a whole list of different references here. And they all paint a consistent picture of a Gulf Stream system that has been slowing uh, in the 20th century and is now uh, as slow as it hasn't been in at least uh, a thousand years. So to sum up, I've given you two examples of tipping points where once we cross a critical point, we will trigger, um, I would say, a major disaster of planetary scale here, which we should definitely avoid. We don't know how far away these tipping points are, but we know we are moving towards them. It's basically like uh, running towards a cliff in the fog, and you don't know where you hit that cliff. And now I hand over to Antje. Thank you very much for your attention.